we've always let our drivers race. That's just the way we've operated as a team. And we didn't think that we were going to be in a position where favouring one driver or the other would get us a better position in the race. So we just let them race. Tire degradation is considered low in Jeddah, so why did we start Lewis on the hard tire rather than the soft? And would the soft have given us a bigger advantage? Well, for us looking at the strategy, we felt the soft wasn't going to be a great race tire. The two race tires were always going to be the medium and the hard on our car. So the question was, do we go medium and then hard on a one stop, or do we go hard then medium? And actually, if we look at the results of the simulations, they said pretty much the same results statistically, that it didn't really matter which tire we started on. But given where Lewis was starting from, we thought there's a potential game we could make by fitting the hard tyre. If we got the safety car at the right time, a safety car that had come out just after the others had pitted on their medium, that would really give an advantage to Lewis because he could have a much shorter effective pit stop time if he was able to stop under a safety car. And as you can see with the Leclerc, he had to pit earlier. And pitting earlier before that safety car meant that he had to take the full stop time in his race time. Whereas all of those that had stayed out on the track on the harder tyres had the advantage of being able to pit under the safety car. So there wasn't a huge amount in it, but it felt to us that that was a strategic gamble that was worth taking. Can you explain what a changing concept actually means? Well, the simple answer is it means different things to different people. I think after Bahrain, we had to accept we weren't where we wanted to be, that we had to look at all the things that make up our car and work out what could we be doing differently? How could we get more performance? Because there's a significant gap for us to catch up to the front. So the engineers are busy looking at aerodynamics, they're looking at the shape of the car, you know, things like the side pod geometry, the floor geometry, have we missed a trick? We're also looking in the simulation world of, are we targeting the right things? Are we pushing the aerodynamics in the right direction? We're looking at the mechanical setup of the car. Are there things there that we're missing? You know, what else can we bring to the car that's going to add performance? And we're trying to do that as fast as we possibly can, because we want to get back to the front. We want to be competing at the front. And the only way we're going to do that is by accepting we're not in the position we want to be and fighting and working really hard to get back there. Was Lewis told at the end of the race to maintain a 10 second gap to Alonso? Well, at that stage, all we'd seen is the video footage of the penalty served by Aston Martin. And we could see that one of the mechanics had made contact with the car. And we didn't know whether that would turn into a penalty or not. We also probably didn't really know what penalty would be applied. While we thought it'd probably be a 10 second penalty, it could also be a five second penalty. So both drivers were asked to push. George's case, he got close to the five seconds. And in Lewis's case, he got close to the 10 seconds. Unfortunately for us, the stewards decided that there wasn't actually a penalty to serve. And therefore it made no difference in the end anyway. Why didn't the team order George to let Lewis by, as Lewis was on the faster tyre and couldn't have attacked Alonso for P3? Well, first of all, we've got to bear in mind that the safety car was pretty early, so it was going to be a very long final stint. Although Lewis came out on the faster tyre, theoretically the medium, by the end of the stint, the hard tyre was going to be a much quicker tyre. So although Lewis could put pressure on George initially, he wasn't going to be able to do that at the end of the stint. And so there probably wasn't a clear which tyre is faster or slower if you look at the full stint length. We've always let our drivers race. That's just the way we've operated as a team. And we didn't think that we were going to be in a position where favouring one driver or the other would get us a better position in the race. So we just let them race. How is the atmosphere in the team? Well, firstly, thanks for asking. Obviously, Bahrain was a real reality check. Um, to find ourselves in the position we find ourselves in, not being competitive was a real disappointment, a disappointment for the whole team. But you have to get yourself through that and you have to turn that into what are we going to go and do about it? How are we going to bring the sort of the energy and what we're capable of doing? How are we going to move ourselves forward? How are we going to get ourselves back in the fight? And actually walking around the factory, there's a huge amount of energy. There's a huge amount of work going on. We're starting to see some of the development come through already that's going to get us back into this championship fight. And all we can do is just keep pushing. And actually, I've been really pleased to see the attitude in the team. Do you expect Australia to be more like Bahrain or more like Jeddah in terms of pace and performance? Well, firstly, our main aim at the moment is to continue learning. We've only had two races so far. It's really difficult to build trends from that. Um, and really what we're really concentrating on is trying to work out how do we keep moving forward? Can we make that next little step? Can we gain some more understanding that's going to help us recover? In terms of the actual characteristics of the circuit, Australia is probably front limited. You know, probably more like Jeddah than, than like Bahrain. So let's hope we can find another small step forward, get a bit more competitive, find the learning that's going to help us move forward in the long term. Mm -hmm.